Hello there, people of the internet. So I was recently watching a video uh, from InRange TV done by Carl talking about the idea that the 1860 was technically the first quote-unquote assault rifle. Although it was not select fire, it still provided a tremendous amount of fire very, very quickly in comparison to other firearms that were being used during that time period. A lot like how full auto provides a tremendous amount of fire downrange very, very quickly in comparison to the semi-automatic counterpart, which is what we would be using today. Now this is not an 1860. I am absolutely foaming at the mouth <laughs> trying to get my hands on an 1860. I would love to get my hands on an 1860. This is not one of those. I'm, like I said, I'd love to get my hands on one. I want to get one for the channel. Uh, if you want to help with that, Utreon, Patreon, you know, financial support is absolutely the best way that you can do that, you know, or just like, subscribe, share, more people, more viewing, more ad revenue, etc., etc. Unfortunately, I'm not made of money, and I can't just go out and get myself a 1860 Henry for video purposes, you know, just, just like that. I gotta earn my way up to it. But, anyway, the concept of the 1860 being the first assault rifle. Whenever the 1860 was made most of what military technology was back in the day although they did have quote unquote repeaters to some extent they weren't repeaters to the point to where all you had to do was one singular action and you could continue to send round after round after round down range or in the event of like oh your average conscripted soldier they were still rocking you know muzzle loaders and those were incredibly slow to use versus somebody with an 1860 that would be able to step up onto the, onto the battlefield and lay down a tremendous amount of fire very, very quickly. Back during those time periods, you know, a lever action was essentially what full auto is nowadays. You can lay down a lot of fire incredibly quickly. Now, by today's standards, the uh, 44 uh, Henry Rimfire, which is what the original 1860s were chambered in, would absolutely be considered an anemic pistol caliber cartridge. However, Carl had talked about how they were, at the time period, more of an intermediate caliber cartridge, you know, for that time period. Definitely not what we would consider to be intermediate nowadays. However, uh, 44 uh, Henry Rimfire, whenever it was going down range, it was a 200 grain bullet traveling at about 1100 or so feet per second using a 28 grain or yeah 28 grains of black powder if memory serves me correctly i think i'm roughly in that ballpark for the 44 uh rim fire and i will argue that there is several pistols that took roughly that same equivalent charge roughly that same equivalent power i would argue that the 44 rim fire was still considered to be, ballistically speaking, a pistol cartridge, even by those standards. But I absolutely see where he's coming from. That's not an argument. Those are such minor details that I'm not even concerned about them. But I would say, by those standards, that would be a pistol caliber cartridge. Now, an intermediate caliber cartridge, I would say, happened whenever uh, they swapped over from 44 rimfire to the 4440, which is the same 200 grain projectile, but with 40 grains of black powder behind it, so it was traveling at considerably more velocities than the 44 rimfire was. Now, whenever the 44 40 had come out. There's so many numbers. I got to make sure that I don't misspeak here. Whenever the 4440 had come out, the 4570 was also on the horizon. They were trying to replace the 5070 for trajectory reasons, but we're not going to go into that. The 4570 was absolutely a full power rifle round, and it was not. Well, the 4440 was not definitely not nearly as powerful as the 4570. Obviously, because it's a lightweight bullet, the 4570 had like a 405 grain bullet versus the half size bullet like a little over half size uh 200 grain of the 4440 with a much less power to charge you know 75 grains of black powder versus 40 grains of black powder so the 4440 there's a bug on my lens the 4440 for the time period absolutely was going to be considered an intermediate caliber cartridge now, there were pistols chambered in that as well, so the argument can be made that as pistols got better, intermediate caliber cartridges went from being intermediate caliber to pistol caliber, but that's like tomato tomato as far as I'm concerned. There's, there's a lot that can be read into that one, but I would say 
And comparing when the cartridges were actually coming out, I would say 4440 would be more considered intermediate than the 44 rim fire. But the concept of being able to lob less powerful bullets downrange very, very quickly, I could absolutely see where that would be considered, like considered the same, at least the same concept as what we consider assault rifles to be today. The con concept of the assault rifle was being able to shove as much lead down range as quickly as possible with the, the cartridges that you're firing being not as powerful as a full power round, but powerful enough to be able to touch out distances that actual combat was taking place at. And the 4440 and 44 Henry rimfire were you know, more than capable of touching out to 300 yards or so, especially if you knew what you were doing and were accurate with it. As a matter of fact, I was watching a video of somebody else uh, shooting 4440 from a replica or a reproduction uh, 1860 Henry, and they were shooting out at 300 yards and making regular hits, and that was actually a pretty cool video to watch. So I know for a fact that it's possible, so 300 yards and in tends to be where most combat takes place at. So 4440 and 44 Henry definitely falls into the category of being powerful enough to touch out to those distances and handle whatever it is that you're wanting to handle at those distances. Whereas something like the 4570, they were, you know, lobbing shots out to a thousand yards, although very rarely did combat take place at a thousand yards. And the full power 4570 from a trapdoor rifle sending that lead down range was considerably so slower than cycling a bunch of rounds through a Henry lever action. So I, I actually agree. I wholeheartedly agree that the concept behind the Henry being the first quote unquote assault rifle back in the day is at least viable. They were essentially going for the same concept that our quote unquote assault rifles uh, have adopted nowadays of being intermediate and strong enough to handle out to you know distances that you're wanting to handle at, but weak enough the cartridge is weak enough to allow very fast follow-up shots the one thing that i don't necessarily agree with is 44 rimfire being considered intermediate back in the day even back in the day even back during its creation i would still consider it a pistol caliber cartridge considering the loads that they were using for the pistols back during those time periods. So I got a couple of rounds here. These are 38 special rounds. These particular ones are hand loads and I'm just gonna send them at my steel down range here. We're at about uh, 70 yards or so. And if you had a rifle, now this rifle right here does load from a Kingsgate versus the Henry rifle, which would actually load on a follower that you put up you know, towards the muzzle of the rifle and you drop the rounds in and there's a whole different feeding system between these rifles, but each operates on a lever action. And if you had the ability to just sit here and lay down fire on whoever's down there and all they had is muzzle loaders and they were trying to reload, you could sit here and just lay down a hail of fire down on those bastards. And pretty easily, I mean, smack your target down there. Now, since you are loaded or you're using a rifle that takes actual cartridges as opposed to, say, a muzzle loader where you got to pour powder and then ram a ball and whatnot, even with the 44 Henry, the original 1860 Henry, even with that system, you could still reload a lot faster than somebody with a muzzle loader, especially if you're just going to load one single round into the chamber and close your action. So even after you run out of ammunition, you would still be able to, I mean, it does not take long to run that follower up, tilt that, grab a handful of cartridges, and even if you just like dump three or four down that tube in the event of an emergency situation and let that follower drop, you can start cycling at whoever it is that's coming after you. And you could do that very quickly and very easily. All right, I want to see if I can clank that steel there. I was aiming for the rim of the car because, man, shooting... Shooting the rim of a car is always a good time. Let me see if I can hit that steel too. That one looked low. I saw dirt fly up. There we go. I think that was the clank of steel there. Yeah, that, that I know was the clank of steel. Get out of here, you. All right. I hit the steel a couple of times there. One of the concepts that I don't like about the 44 rimfire was that it was rimfire 
and uh, unlike my 38 Special Brass here, which is center fire, it could not be reloaded. Now, back during these time periods, of course, there was no internet and there was no social media or anything like that. And people would spend, you know, months out in the field. And I mean, if you knew what you knew and what you knew was what everyone had, and let's say you were, you know, in the Confederacy, you were 18 years old in the Confederacy, and they handed you a smoothbore musket, right? And that's what you knew. And you're used to seeing the enemy with a bunch of muskets. Well, lo and behold, one day some guy comes up and you're used to like, all right, let's wait for this guy to fire. Bang, he fired. All right, now I can, you know, move in and take him out before he reloads. And some guy on the battlefield just goes, man, that's a, that's a lot of superior firepower. And I can't imagine being on the opposing side, like bang, all right, here we go. Bang, oh God, bang, ah, he's still firing. What the hell? And I think the original capacity for those Henry rifles was like 16 rounds or something like that. They were the rifle that you could load on Sunday and shoot all week. But I mean, just bang, 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 bang. That would be ridiculously fast in comparison to somebody who was used to dealing with muzzle loaders. <laughs> like, I can't even imagine what somebody would be thinking when somebody comes rolling up onto a battlefield with something like that and they're used to seeing the enemies having one shot to take off. I really do feel like if these were produced, well not these right here, if 1860 Henry's were produced in larger numbers and got like way more mainstream inside the military during the Civil War, we would have seen a dramatic change in military tactics during that time period than what we saw with their main rifle being the, uh, the muzzle loader. A very interesting concept, and I wanted to make a video on it because I was just absolutely fascinated behind the idea where a lever action would be considered the first assault rifle in comparison to what was being used during that time period. I mean, taking into consideration, I guess it would be classified as an intermediate caliber cartridge, though I would argue differently. And you could stick a lot of rounds downrange very, very rapidly, and it was powerful enough to touch out to distances that most of your combat was taking place at at the time. So yeah, I could absolutely 100% see how that right there, according to Carl at Ingrange, would be considered the first assault rifle. It's just a mind-boggling idea, and I really, really like the concept. <laughs> anyway, folks, let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below. I had a lot of fun. I was looking for an excuse to come out here and shoot my lever action, and I was like, let's make a follow-up video to that, because the concept is just really... I wouldn't exactly call it revolutionary, because it's a concept that has existed for a very long time, but whenever, <laughs> whenever the 1860 rifle had come out, I would call the concept of that creation revolutionary. Of course, the idea of adopting like repeating arms and whatnot has obviously existed before that time period, but this was an intermediate cartridge that could be sent down range very fast, and it was powerful enough, like I said, to take care of whatever, whatever distances most combat was gonna be taking place at. So like I said, let me know what y'all's thoughts are down below, and I do appreciate your time. It was an interesting concept. And I, I definitely enjoy the idea. By today's standards, I would call it more of a, it's like a PCC, a pistol caliber carbine that is like the length of a rifle. It's a really interesting idea. I'm not sure what I would classify it as today. I would say pistol caliber rifle instead of pistol caliber carbine, because it's definitely not a carbine. It's absolutely rifle length, but I'm not, I'm not sure how I would classify it. How, how would you guys classify it? Let me know what y'all's thoughts are down in, the, er, down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share. The description has a bunch of links. Go check that out. And I will see you guys in the next video with whatever else it is that we decide to do.
I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. 